Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by today. And today I'm in DxO Photo Lab 4, which is a great product. I'm having a lot of fun with it and continue to explore that as a potential alternative to Lightroom for me. And one of the things that I need out of a product to replace Lightroom is the ability to really control light and color. So that's what this video is about, where I take a photo that I took. I don't take a photo. I edit a photo that I took. Uh, and all I'm trying to do is make it look like the scene as I remember it, which for me is, you know, anytime you capture a photo, the camera sees what the camera sees. Doesn't necessarily mean that's what it looked like. The colors are kind of washed out. It's a little too dark in the wrong places. We need to rebalance the light, pop the color a little bit, and get this thing looking good. So here's the photo. I'm in the advanced workspace. If you go up here, you can click standard, and you'll see on the right-hand side, now the left side pops up regardless, but I'm gonna close that in a second. The basic tools are there in the uh, standard workspace, but I like the advanced workspace where it shows me a lot more of the tools. I'm gonna close that right-hand uh, panel because I don't need that. So I'm starting over here, and the first thing I wanna do is get into smart lighting, which I've really gotten to enjoy. And I'm turning that on, and it defaults to 25, and you know what, I'm fine with that. I think it looks great if you compare it to what the photo looked like before. A little bit too dark, right? And a little bit too bright in the sky. The sky didn't really get impacted, but those dark areas really came up a little bit. So I'm happy with that so far. Next, I'm gonna go into selective tone and turn that on. And here I'm gonna bring the highlights down a bit because that sky is really just you know too bright. And I'm gonna pull the shadows up a little bit in order to kind of work on balancing the light. And that's really what I'm doing. I'm in the light section. So um, I think in my personal opinion for editing, the first thing you do is balance the light out before you do anything else. So I love that these tools are kind of lined up that way. It just, it jives with uh, the way I think, for lack of a better word. But I've now done smart lighting and selective tone and basically balance the light a little bit. So I'm feeling pretty good. Got some more to do though. And the next thing is clear view plus, and I'm gonna turn that on. It defaults to 50, but I'm gonna pull that down to about 35 or 36. It basically operates like dehazing. So if you turn that off, if you look at the sky especially, it's definitely kind of washed out and kind of grayish looking almost, very cloudy at the top. And now you can see a little bit more depth in the sky, a little bit more control over the light, which I like. So I think that's an improvement. That's a tool that I typically use a bit sparingly. And notice that if you do things like this, it really gets kind of crunchy. It almost looks HDR. So I definitely want to go kind of gently on that one. So I think I was around 35 or 36. I think I'll leave it there. Pretty happy with that one so far. Next up is contrast. So I'm going to turn that on and open this tool. And I'm just going to give it a slight bump in contrast, like maybe a 16. Nothing major, just a little bit of contrast simply because I think without contrast, let me turn that off, the image looks a little bit flatter, and this isn't a lot of contrast, but a little bit more gives it a little bit more, um, I don't know, dose of reality. I'm not really sure how to describe it. I just think it looks a little bit better if you have a little bit more contrast in your image, depending, of course, on what your image is starting like. But I think that and the clear view really helped to kind of get this image to pop a little bit more. So there it is before those two tools and now after. I think it's really coming to life, but still a little bit too dark. We're gonna fix some of that. And the colors are not even remotely close to looking like the sunset that I remember. We're gonna fix that as well. Speaking of color, the very next thing is white balance. I'm gonna get in here, turn that on, and it was a beautiful sunset. I'm gonna warm this thing up to about a 14 or so. I don't wanna go too much. I don't wanna overdo it. I'm not trying to really create crazy popping, you know, really intense colors. I just wanna make it warmer and more beautiful and yet still um, subtle, for lack of a better word. In other words, I'm not gonna kill it with color, which I do like to do, to be clear, if you've seen other videos, but uh, not today. Uh, here in color accentuation, I am gonna give it a bump in vibrance, about 45 or 46, and that sounds like a lot. I mean, you know, you're halfway to 100, but if you look at the before and after of that, there it is before, and there it is after, it's not really super intense or over the top, so I kinda like that. You can drag the sliders fairly far and not really create a over the top image, which is nice. Okay, now I'm gonna get into HSL, which is a really cool and powerful tool here in DxO, and I need to probably come back and do a video about this because there's a lot you can do here. But first, I'm, I'm gonna start by saturating the whole thing, which I don't really recommend doing a lot of the time, but if you look at that, it really popped those colors quite a bit. Um, there it is before, and there it is after. Those orange is really warmed up and that sort of thing, which I like. So I went ahead and saturated the whole image this time, even though it's not something I normally do. 
but I am going to come in here to the green. Those trees in the bottom left are just getting a little too happy. So I'm going to pull those down to like a negative 35 or something. And then that blue is too blue. Um, it's a sunset. And while I love my blues, it probably, when I'm editing, is a color that I use probably more than others. But in this case, I want more of that warm sunset look. So I'm going to pull the blues down. I got to check my notes. There we go. I went about a negative 55, 56, something like that. So you can see I've taken out a lot of the blue. And if you look at that before, any of these color adjustments, there it is, kind of muted looking overall. And after a bit warmer, a nice pop. I love the warmth of that reflection in the river. This is Prague, by the way, taken a number of years ago when I was there for a few days. Gorgeous town. I can't wait to go back someday. If we can ever travel again, this would be at the top of my list of places I want to go. Anyway, I think the colors are looking better thanks to that work in HSL and the white balance and the color accentuation tool. Okay, I've done all those other things and now I want to fine tune the image and that's where local adjustments come in. You can get to it by clicking that up there or down here on this right hand side. I'm just going to click on tools. Let me turn that on and I'm going to go ahead and click here, but I want to right click first, make sure I have a graduated filter. You do have some choices here. You've got a control point, which is like a radial and you've got a brush, things like that. We're going to use a graduated filter and I'm just going to click and if I can hold it straight and slow it down a little bit, I'm going to drag this right here into the sky and I'm going to position it a little bit like that and maybe pull it a little bit more. And what I want to do, these three dots here give you a lot of control over the image. Uh, the first one is light, the second one is color, and the third one is detail. I want to go to color and all I want to do is go to vibrancy and just kind of bump that up a little bit. So you can just grab that little uh, uh, whatever it is, the thing, slider, I don't know, but it's vertical. So to me, sliders are left and right, but whatever the thing is, you grab the thing and then you can just drag it up if you want to go really vibrant or down if you don't. Um, I want to go medium, so I'm going to go maybe something like that. And you can see I popped the sky pretty nicely. So that was a quick and easy way to just drop a gradient into the sky, but I'm not finished. I want to do a second one. So I come down here and in the bottom, I click new mask. And then I click right here and I'm already on gradient so I don't have to select it again. This time I'm going to just adjust this a little bit and once again I'm going to come over here. Now the first thing I want to do here is increase the exposure a little bit because this gradient is impacting the bottom of the photo. You can see what I'm doing, right? Um, I don't want to go that high. So it was like here basically at no adjustment and I want to lift that a little bit and I just want to brighten that foreground a little because it's too dark for me. Um, I think something like that looks a little bit better. In fact, maybe pull that back a little bit. Um, I don't want to make it too bright, but I definitely want to brighten it because I want to have good visibility into the bottom of the photo, especially that walkway, because that's leading your eye. To me, it's obviously leading your eye across the river and to the castle, but I kind of want to go like that and have your eye go follow that and look at the castle and the sunset and all that. So you want to have enough visibility into that that leading line, right? For like lack of a better word. Uh, I'm going to go to saturation and vibrance. I'm going to play with these a little bit. I want to give them a little bit of bump as well. And I think something like that. And now that I'm done that, I might come over here and grab this exposure and increase it just a little bit more. Something like that I think looks pretty good. You can always click on that again to hide the menu and hide the mask. But you can see my first mask is there. My second mask is here. The, high, the highlighted stuff in blue obviously shows you where the mask has been applied. And now there's one more mask I want to add. And so I'm going to click new mask and I'm going to come over here. I'm going to position my mouse about there. I'm going to right click. And this time I'm going to grab the brush and that size is just fine. Uh, you can see in the bottom left hand, you've got a menu here for size and feathering and all that. I'm going to go ahead and just paint it in as I want to do with the brush. And all I'm doing is kind of painting over some of these areas here to, uh, you know, to isolate them so I can make some further refinements in these specific areas. And the last thing to do here is just come down along the bridge and fill in some of that. And I think now I've basically got a mask in place that's going to allow me to go do some adjustments. So the first thing I want to do is come to the exposure and I'm going to bump that just a little bit. Like I don't want to go too high like that. Obviously it's um, way too bright, but uh, secondly, you can really clearly see where the edge of the mask is. So I just want to do a little bit of an exposure bump to create a little bit more visibility in those areas simply because they were kind of dark. That's why I isolated them and masked them. While I'm at it, I'm going to add a little bit of contrast simply because I like the contrast there, which means I'm going to come back now 
and lift the exposure a little bit more, and then maybe come over here and lift the shadows just a little bit too. You can see up here, these icons kind of show you, um, to give you a visual representation of what each of these sliders uh, will do for you. I need to come up with a better word than sliders. Sliders make sense when it's left and right, but up and down. Somebody give me a word to help me out here. Throw me a bone. I can't really figure out what to do. Um, I'm trying to look here. I don't think, yeah, there's no color adjustments. I love that you can isolate these things, but I do want to add some sharpness, which is on this third little uh, button here you can click called detail. So I'm just going to increase the sharpness. I'd like to create a little bit more crunch in those areas, and I think that does a fine job. You can highlight over that, see where my mask is applied. I can click that to hide that menu. And there we go. You can see where my three little uh, you know, masks are by doing that. But when you're finished with all the local adjustments, you can just click close. And then I'm done with the image except for one thing I just thought of, and that is the repair tool. I want to take a couple of these things out of the water because they're kind of distracting to me. And so I've now done that. And you know what? I don't like that one little tiny piece of brown, kind of black looking cloud. I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit done. And I'm complete with my image, my friends. That's a full edit. And so let me show you where we started because we came a long way. Lots of light and color work. That's what the image looked like coming out of the camera. So really not that great. It was a beautiful sunset. There was some lovely color. The human eye sees, uh, what is it, like 15 stops of light or something, whatever. Uh, but the camera doesn't. And uh, this was an older camera. This was probably three, four, it was four years ago, I think, when I took this. So bottom line, my camera wasn't as good as my current one, and um, the photo looked like this, but the scene did not. The scene looked more like that because you have better visibility. Um, anyway, that's how I edited the photo. That's how I go about controlling the light and the color in DxO Photo Lab 4. Lots of powerful tools, lots of cool stuff you can do, and hopefully this gives you some ideas. I'm a big fan of the local adjustments and the mass that you can do. It just comes in super handy. I use those in other apps as well, just because that's how you can control the outcome of a photo and what you really want to get out of it is by local masking. So that's my workflow for this one, my friends. Hope it helps. Hope it gives you some ideas on how to use PhotoLab 4 in your own editing. And more than anything, thanks for watching, coming by, hanging out, all that stuff. Have fun editing out there, my friends. I'll see you really soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves till then, and... Adiós.